Hello, J2. Hello. I'm so happy to see you today. Today's program is dedicated to you. We've seen a lot of pioneers this week, but did you know that there are also youth pioneers? who made a real difference in the beginnings of our church. And we're going to be focusing on some of those young pioneers today. You're going to be meeting Henry White, as well as some other young pioneers. Now, Henry White was the eldest son of James and Ellen White. Who knows, who can name, and raise your hand, who can name another son of James and Ellen White? Okay, I saw your hand first. Edson. Edson. So we have Henry and Edson. Yeah. We have Willie and we have John Herbert. That's right. Now, John Herbert was a little baby when he died. Unfortunately, he only lived a little while and he became very, very sick and he died. So then we had Henry and Edson and Willie. And this was during the time of the U.S. Civil War, when the North, the Union troops, were fighting with the South, the Confederates, and the Whites lived in Battle Creek, very near the Army practice grounds, where they would practice marching and maneuvers, getting ready for war. So let's see what Henry and Edson and Willie were up to. I want you to go this way. Exact same everything. Just go this way and march back up this way. Sure. Band's ready for the camera. Ready? Forward march! Left, 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 right, left, left, left. Left, right, left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left. A company halt at ease. Great job, boys. You'll make fine soldiers one day. <laughs> but I sure wish I could be a soldier now. Me too. <laughs> well, you're just too young. But I'll be 16 in August. I'll bet I could join up and play the fife or drum. Already, the commander lets me march beside them and whistle while they're practicing. In fact, he likes my whistling so much, he told the fife player not to play while I was whistling. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Sure is. <laughs> you know, being a soldier might not be so bad if you're part of the Union Army. After all, the Union is fighting for the right cause, to unite our country and free the slaves. That's right. Well, anyway, it's time to go home. Attention! The company march! Left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left. Neighborhood could hear the white boys as they marched, and later they got a drum and they could even hear it louder. Well, their father and mother were a little worried about what was going on because they knew that Henry that really might be able to join up with the army and they didn't want that. Not only that, but the Seventh-day Adventist Church had just been organized. It was 1863, and they had a decision to make. Here they are in the middle of a war, the country is, and here's this brand new denomination. What about the young men in the newly formed Seventh-day Adventist Church? Should they be soldiers in the army? Well, the church leaders didn't think so. So they sent a young man by the name of J.N. Andrews. Has anyone heard of J.N. Andrews? Yes, well, we'll be meeting him on Sabbath. But anyway, they sent him to Washington, D.C., 
where he met with President Lincoln's leaders and talked about the Seventh-day Adventist Church and how we didn't believe in killing and asked if we could please be what's called a non-combatant, that we could help in medical ways but not fight and kill. And the government agreed. So young Seventh-day Adventists, they could uh, do something in exchange instead of going to fight in the war. Well, the whites continued to be worried about their boys and they decided it would be a good thing to leave Battle Creek for now and go back to Topson, Maine. Now that's where Henry lived from when he was just a little baby. He stayed with some good friends there while his parents were traveling until he was five years old. So this was like going home for him. And on the way, as they traveled from Battle Creek, they stopped with some friends in Alcott, New York, and they went for a boat ride. And Henry's going to tell us a little bit about what happened on that boat ride. Henry? Look at all these fine ladies and gentlemen. Do you all like to sing? Well, I love to sing too, thank you very much. <laughs> you know, I remember this one time when our family was traveling from Michigan back to Maine, and we stopped to see friends in Alcott, New York. It's right on Lake Ontario. We all went out on the water on a boat. It was just so beautiful out there on the lake, I, I just had to sing. And so did my brothers. We sang a song called The Evergreen Shore. It was a little something like this. We are vo joyously voyaging over the main, bound for an evergreen shore, whose inhabitants never sickness complain and never see death anymore. Then let the hurricane roar, it will the sooner be o'er. We will weather the blast and will land at last safe on the evergreen shore. We will weather the blast and we'll land at last, safe on the evergreen shore. Thank you, Henry. Wasn't that beautiful? Henry, was known for his beautiful voice and his mother called him the sweet singer. Well, the whites continued on their journey and before long they ended up in Topson, Maine. They received a warm welcome by their friends the Howlands and they were so excited to see Henry. They hadn't seen Henry since he was just a little boy and as you can see he really grew up to be tall. And uh, after they were there for a little while, it was time for James and Ellen White. They had to go to some meetings, but the boys were happy to stay with their old friends, the Howlands. So they stayed at the Howlands' home while their parents were away uh, giving lectures and visiting people. But you know, one day when, when their parents were away, James and Ellen White, they just, they were worried. They were worried something wasn't right. What was it? What was it? The children. Something about the children. And back then, of course, there were no cell phones. There weren't phones. What could they do? A letter would take too long. There were no airplanes to get there quickly, but they felt they needed to hurry back to the Howlands, there was something not right. Something was wrong with the children, or at least, at least one of them. What was wrong? Well, Henry, Henry had somehow caught a cold. 
And back then, even a cold could be quite serious. They didn't have the medicines that we have today. They didn't really know how to care for some kinds of sicknesses. His cold quickly turned to pneumonia. He became very sick and was in bed. our poor Henry. <laughs> Father, Shh. Father, Shh. Mother, please pray for me. I, I don't feel ready to die. I, I don't feel I've been the sort of Christian I should have been. I don't feel I've been a good example to my younger brothers and friends. Please, please pray for me. pray for you. We will pray for you, Henry. Yes, let's pray, James. Oh, Lord, you see our precious Henry, our sweet singer. Father, please, please heal him if it's your will. He suffers so. Please help him to be well. Amen. Amen. Oh, dear Henry, you know, Jesus will forgive your sins. We have a Savior. You don't need to be worried. Just ask him to forgive your sins. He will forgive you. I know he will. Oh, God, please forgive me. Please redeem me and make me yours again. Dear Lord. I give myself to you. It is, it is all that I can do. Here, Lord, I give myself to you. It is, it is all that I can do. <laughs> oh, praise God. I am sure he has forgiven my sins. He is so good, so good to me. Praise God. Praise the Lord. He is so good to me. Oh, amen. Promise me. Mother, I need you to promise me that if I am to die, you will take me back to Battle Creek, Michigan and bury me beside my little brother, John Herbert, that we may come up together in the morning of the resurrection. Yes, of course. Of course, Henry, we will take you back to Battle Creek. Yes, Henry, yes, we promise, we promise. If, if that's what happens, we will lay you to rest beside your little brother, John Herbert. Father, I wish to say a few words to my young friends before I go to sleep. Would you, would you please write them? Thank you. What shall I say? I consider it a privilege before I sleep to say a few words to my young friends. <coughs> Forgive me. I am 16 years old. I was baptized and united with the church last winter. I truly mourn over my unfaithfulness in the good cause. I believe the Lord has placed his hand of affliction upon me to save me. And if I go down unto death now, I have a good hope. 
coming up with the saints and the first resurrection. I appeal to my young friends not to let the pleasures or accomplishments of the world eclipse the loveliness of the Savior. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> the deathbed is a rather poor place to prepare for an inheritance, especially one in the second life. Spend the best of your days in service to the Lord. Farewell. Uh, oh, and be sure to bring my friends in Battle Creek these words. Don't take my life for an example. Give up the world and be Christians. Not long afterwards, Henry White died. His mother and his father were heartbroken boys with the knife on the second row with the blue and white cap. You might want to put your knife away as we talk about poor Henry. Poor Henry who died. Well, his special message was published and it went everywhere. Thousands and thousands of people read it. And young people, just like you, read his message. And maybe you're, you boys should read Henry's message too. He would tell you to make Jesus first in your life because you never know how long you'll live. Just think about it. Here we all are today, just like Henry was alive and feeling good. One week later, he got sick and died. None of us know. No matter how old or young we are, if we'll be alive tomorrow or the next week. So it's really important every single day to give our heart to Jesus and to live for him. And that's what Henry's message was all about. And even though he was very young, he made a big difference in the lives of so many people. So even if you're young, you can make a big difference for Jesus. And now we are going to hear about two more young men who made a real difference, who were pioneers in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and their names are Luther, Warren, and Harry Fenner. Have any of you heard of Luther and Harry? Okay, a couple of you. Well, we are going to meet Luther and Harry now. They probably had read and maybe even met Henry, but they had most probably read his message for young people. So let's see what they have to share with us. You know, Harry, I'm worried. About what? Some of our friends. They don't seem to, they seem to be too busy messing around or playing games, and they don't seem to be having enough time with God. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, even in Sabbath school, for instance, they don't pay attention to the lesson. Most of the time, they don't even sing. Sometimes they don't even participate when they, like, in praying. I mean, I wish we could do something to help them become more interested in that type of things. 
Yeah, me too. Hmm. I have an idea. What is it? What if we had a boys' society? We could meet together each week. Yeah, and we could, we could talk about missionary work we could do, and we could write missionary letters, and we can hand out literature and tracts. And we, right, and we could use, have a temperance pledge against the use of tobacco, tea, and that type of stuff. Yeah, and we could, we could, we could collect money and we could buy more literature and stuff. And we could meet at my house one week, your house the next week, and maybe some the other boys' houses too. Yeah, that sounds good. But Harry, do you think do you think it'll work? Do you think two boys like me and you can make a difference? I don't know, Harry. But why don't we pray about it and see what God would have us do? And God heard the prayers of those two boys, those two boys who were worried for their friends and wanted to make sure that their friends would be ready when Jesus came. So they started their meetings. And at first, it was just boys. And they had a wonderful time together. They would sing. They would pray. They would do missionary activities together. And before long, the girls heard about it, and the girls wanted to join them, too. So they had to find a bigger place to meet. And they would meet in the large rooms of some of the other homes uh, of Advent believers. And it grew, and it grew, and it grew, and it became Adventist youth. And from that, Pathfinders. First it was the missionary volunteers and junior missionary volunteers. And who's heard of Pathfinders? Who's heard of Adventurers? Do you know that that all started with the idea that came from Harry and Luther? All because they wanted to do something for Jesus and they wanted to help their young friends. Have you ever thought about what can you do to help your friends? Are you worried about any of your friends that maybe they don't love Jesus or maybe there's something wrong and you can help them? Think about it. Maybe you can do something just like those two boys did. I'm sure of it because God can use you too just like he used Henry and he used the other two boys as well, Luther and Harry. So let's just have a word of prayer now as we end our story for today. Dear Jesus, as we think about young people, we know that they are extra special to you and that you have plans for them. Please help each boy, each girl here, that if there is one or more who has not accepted you into their life yet, that they will do so right here at this camp meeting, right here in the J2 tent, right now, this very moment, that they will just pray, Dear Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I need you as my Savior. I love you, dear Lord. In this we pray, amen. Okay.